Those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength, and they shall rise up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome again to the Eagles. Thank you for joining with us tonight. And we are expecting his presence. Amen. We're expecting his presence and for his love to touch our hearts and our lives afresh tonight. Glory to God. Father, we thank you as we commit this night into your hands. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us into everything that you're wanting us to share, that you're wanting us to hear and to receive tonight in the name of Jesus. So we commit this time to you. We thank you for every single person joining us from all the different places and nations that they come in from. Father, we know that there's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. There's no limitation for your word that what we minister here can touch people wherever they are. So we're asking you tonight to speak to our hearts through your word. Help us, Holy Spirit, to become more effective for the things of God, more effective as we go out into the world every day to reach the lost to pray for people that are sick and bring encouragement to those that are walking in darkness. So we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I, I was pondering on that scripture this morning as I come to share with you. He said, eh, where two or three are gathered together eh, in my name, and you can say when two or three are gathered together or were two or three are gathered together there in my name. He says, there I am in the midst. And you know, one translation says, I am right there with them. So I believe that he's right there with us tonight. He's right here with us tonight. Another one says, I will be right there amongst them. Another one says, you can be sure that I'll be there. So we're, we're acknowledging the presence of God, the power of the Spirit of God right now leading us and feeding us, guarding us and guiding us in Jesus' name. I want you to quickly turn tonight. I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you. It's just so ministered to my heart. In, Ma in Matthew 9, verse 35 and 36, it says, And Jesus went about the cities and the villages, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing all kinds of disease and every weakness and infirmity. And when he saw the throngs, he was moved with compassion for them because they were bewildered, harassed, distressed, dejected and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And God's heart's always been for sheep to have a shepherd. That's why he has the church in the earth, isn't it? So that there's a shepherd uh, there's all teams of them. We have two other pastors that stand alongside us and we have a wonderful leadership team that stand with us. So to create a great sheepfold for people to come in, to be encouraged, to be prayed for, for needs in their lives to be met. But the one thing that I want to major on tonight is something that touched my heart. And I know when I'm seeking the Lord for a sermon, for anywhere where I minister, if my heart starts moving with it, then that's the one that I need to move on. And this is the one tonight. It says he was moved with compassion. Move with compassion. You know, another translation says Jesus' heart was moved deeply with compassion. And, and, and that means he moved 
to work towards whoever that that compassion was leading him to, to help people. And remember, that's what God wants to do in each one of our hearts, help us to be moved by that compassion in our prayer, in, in if he's leading us to actually call, visit or text someone to, to start being moved by the compassion of God. And people need that, you know, and we know that the Bible says that Jesus has never changed. Glory to God. He's the same yesterday, today. He'll be the same forever. And God, he was just moved towards people. Hallelujah. Now, I was just spending time listening, going over scriptures in my Bible, and I listen to it too, you know, while I'm getting ready. But it says, you know, that Jesus in the morning, last thing at night, he always spent time with the Father. And it's those times with him that you get refreshed and those times with him that help make your heart more tender and more able to, to hear him, to move with him. And it says Jesus was moved with that compassion. You know, God moves too in different ways. You know, it can be like we have some explosive evening meetings, you know, in Mill Park, and they can be where they're going everywhere at the same time, an explosive dynamic uh, power working there. But, you know, it can be just as explosive with that still small voice ministering to you about you or about a situation where God wants to send you in to help people. And it says in, in Mark 9, 35 and 36, you know, we look at it. Why did Jesus teach and preach and heal? Because he had compassion for the people. He cares about people. He cares about you. He cares about me. Amen. He cares about people. And he saw a multitude and he was moved with compassion. And, you know, sometimes in life we get way too busy or too, we're running around everywhere and we're not taking it slow to see if compassion is moving our hearts to touch someone or to speak a word or even just at that moment to be lifting someone before the Lord. You know, he was moved to help people people who were in trouble, people who were healed, hurt, people who faced rejection. And you know, that's why he still has us in the earth right now. So we can allow that, 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 that staring in our hearts because God's always got someone on his heart that he wants to touch. In fact, today, even while I was studying, the Spirit of God touched my heart to contact someone, you know, and, and, and then we had a talk together on the phone, which was wonderful for me. And, but, but God, I felt that. To, uh, you've got to make that contact today. And so it was really important. See, the whole thing is that God wants to see people free. And that's why that we teach and we preach God's word at Rhema. We're committed to it. We are a word and a spirit church. You know, that, that's very important to us. We're a church that believes in prayer. We're a church that believes in the word of God, the truth, because he said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And this book contains all the words of truth. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every time we come to the, you know, what moves us is, 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 that, is that God's love for people. It moves us all the time to see the sick healed, the lost saved, the hungry fed. What moves us to pray? What moves us to come to the platform in church? And what moves us to, to give a phone call or a text or to what, get, get one of our pastors or leaders to visit someone that may be in hospital, to go in and represent us to the people and, and go in and pray with them and, and be there for 
for them is the love and the compassion of God. Amen. And tell people that God loves them and believes in them. You know, our team at Rhema, we have a wonderful team. We have pastors on staff with us, Pastor Gary and Lorraine and Pastor Paul and Lisa. And we have a wonderful leadership team. I mean, I mean, they're wonderful people. They're caring people. We have great prayer teams. You know, you've heard me share it before. We have prayer request teams and, and all kinds of teams praying all the time. We have morning prayer with a group of people that we send up prayer at 6.30 and we're in different locations, but all praying into the same thing. We have... Um, prayer. We have a great missions team. We have great musicians and singers. Why do they come in so early on a Sunday morning and stay back so late Sunday night, setting up, packing up, getting up there and ministering? It's because God's compassion. They, they want to play and that music touch people's hearts and help them to lift their hands and help them to start hearing from heaven. Amen. What moves us? Well, God does. Because we too want to see people healed and, uh, and delivered from hurts and disappointments and to see the Holy Spirit touch people's lives. Amen. There's nothing more wonderful for us to be going home on a Sunday night and going through seeing, you know, for a pastor standing up there ministering the word. And sometimes you can. You can see, wow, that person's just caught it. And there's something so wonderful that... All all of a sudden they can see. You know, the Bible says that Jesus saw people. And, and that's what we have to learn to do. We get, you know, we get so busy in life that we, we move past people, but we don't see them. And sometimes you can hear them talking, but you're not really listening. And God wants us to see people. Jesus saw people and he was moved with compassion. You know, compassion in the vines means this, to be moved inwardly, letting God break through with his heart into your heart and then eventually using you to, to move out and touch people's lives. It means something deeply that moves within us. And we know God has power but God is love. Amen. And it's love that, that um, the love for you, that he releases that power to help us in our lives. And we want his love to move deep, deep down inside us and reach out through us to help people in need. You know, Father, who is there today that needs a call or a text who needs a, one of our pastors to go in and see them or one of our leaders to reach out to them. Glory. We have some wonderful connect group leaders that are so very, very caring about people. You know, we want that love to move us, to help those in need, to help those that have been bruised in their heart by rejection or by abuse, to see people to see people really rise up in him, glory to God. You know, his love in us is supernatural. And the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. If you've been born again and made Jesus the Lord of your life. And when you begin to spend time with him, that's what happened this morning to me as I was going over my notes, looking at the scriptures and what I wanted to share tonight. All of a sudden, I felt the leaning of the Holy Spirit in this area. And I was continuing with my note, leaning me over again. And in the end, I had to stop everything and just take care of what was on his heart. He was moved. And so he, he moved us. But he moves us because we're in the earth. He uses us to go out and to touch people and make people aware that he's aware of them. He's aware of what they're going through. And we're the, the reason that we made that call. We came to see them. We laid hands on them because he was aware of them. Them. He was aware of the call on their life and he touched us to go out to make them aware of that. Glory be to God. And so it's wonderful that love when we get 
and be, get quiet before God and tenderly begin to listen to him. He begins to speak to us. Glory to God. Many think, you know, God will move always with lightning and tingles going off all over you. And yet, you know, we can, he can touch us so much, exactly the same way, so powerfully when with just a gentle voice, a gentle touch to reach out to someone and tell you to help them so that they can see a breakthrough in their life, maybe from a fear, a hurt, a disappointment in their lives. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? That, you know, that song that Ron Canoli sang, If You Can Use Anyone, you can use me. And we want to, we are carriers of his love. We've got agape love in us. We've got that love in us. And that love is what releases power. That love is what, what gets on our feet to start moving like Jesus towards people. You know, I even, even in church, you know, you may be talking, but you're looking around because if there's anyone on their own or anyone that you feel even after services going through things that we get around the people, that's the whole purpose to let them be touched by the compassion of God, to know that God cares about them. You know, that world is so fastly driven, everything's so busy that we've forgotten really to really listen to one another, to really look and see people because everything's at a fast pace these days. But God wants us to take some time and listen. Is there someone, Father, that you want me to call or text or visit or just let them know that you love them? And it's taking that time to get quiet before him and just allow him to touch your heart and begin to use you to bring his compassion to them, to bring his love and his touch to them that day. You know, we can know a divine flow in our hearts and that's God because God is love. God is, is compassion. And the Bible says that Jesus looked at the people you know, that's what we need to do even on Sundays in all churches is stop and look at people. I kind of do that, you know, it's not, I don't do it because, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to do something. I do it. I, I kind of sometimes I'm out the front praising and worshiping God and all of a sudden, I don't know, I have this prompting in my heart and I turn around and look at the congregation, look to the people because it says he looked at the people and he was moved. And it happens a lot with me. I'll turn around and that's when that move, when God will say, I want you to pray for that one. I want you to give them this word and he'll speak to my heart and you have to turn around to look to see where his direction is and follow him. Glory be to God. He looked at the people and he was moved with compassion. You know, he wants to move us eh, eh, to pray for people, to call someone, to reach out to them. Glory be to God. Have you ever had someone do that to you and all of a sudden, it may not at that moment change the outcome of things, but all of a sudden they looked like they could be overcome where before you were overwhelmed with them because somebody was moved by God to look in your direction and to approach you with his compassion. Why, 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 was, it, why was it that he moved to people? because they were harassed, it says in the Amplified Bible. They were distressed, dejected, they were helpless, they were without a shepherd, their problems were so great that they didn't know what to do or where to go for help. And that's why God touches our hearts to pray and to reach out. And it also says they seemed weary and helpless. <laughs> Isn't that just the heart of God? to want to help the helpless, to want to help those that are weary. And, and then he touches our hearts to do things to encourage them. His heart was moved. He literally seen them wandering around. 
and they didn't know where to find help. Do you remember that day when Jesus had been ministering to them? And I think it says that they had 5,000 men there all gathered and the women and the children. And he had them all sit down. And remember, they brought the bread and the fish to him and he blessed it and it was multiplied. But what, why did he do that? Because he cared that they were hungry. He wanted them fed. And so he, he got them to sit down and he got the disciples to stand with him. And when he blessed that bread and fish that in the natural didn't look enough even for 10 or 12 people, but once he blessed it, it was multiplied and it fed the thousands. It fed the people. And the reason he did that, because he, he offered it up to God and God put his blessing on it and it fed the multitude because God cared about them. He didn't want them to be hungry. He didn't want them to have spent all day listening to him and now there's nowhere they can get any food and he fed them. Even the smallest little things in our lives, God is concerned about it because he loves us. His heart was moved and he saw them wandering around. Hallelujah. And he didn't want them to be hungry. So he fed them even before he released them from that meeting. Glory to God. I find in our church that's one of the big things that really helps in connecting people. You know, there's so much food laid on after both our services um, that people stay back just to fellowship, to have that, that, that time of breaking bread, if you want to put it that way, together, spending time around the table. In fact, one of our friends, a minister who was with us for a couple of weeks, she said, I was absolutely amazed to see the people, especially after a night service, staying back the fellowship and the, the chatter in the room. She said it was just so soothing to hear that and to see that. And it is, it's a wonderful thing where every one of us brings something in of a night and then people who want to have that connection. It's like your family when you do a meal, you all come together and it's all the chatter around the table. And it's a wonderful sound to the ears of a pastor to a shepherd to hear that people talking and eating and, and standing and caring about one another before they go off home that night. It's wonderful. We have that every week. You know, I remember Reinhard Bonnke, we picked him up one time, you know, and that my husband and him were speaking in the car and and, he, and they were talking about ministry. They were talking about various things, but talking about ministry. And Reinhardt said to my husband, John, it's not about delivering the perfect sermon. It's about delivering people because God's always concerned about people, seeing people set free from the distresses, the rejection, the abuse, and the things that people go through in life. That's why his power and his touch in our services is so important to us. We're always waiting on him to see where he wants to move and how he wants to move in a service to touch people's lives. That's why we've got two two live churches, one in Doncaster, one in Mill Park. We have an, this online church Sunday morning, Sunday night. We have the Eagles. We have the healing meeting live and online. We have connect meetings through the week. We have Kids Zone. Why? So that we're reaching out to people constantly, ministering to people, trying to connect people and help them so that people don't feel lonely, don't feel lost in a crowd because Jesus actually saw people. He didn't look at a crowd. He saw people. And sometimes we can get lost looking at a crowd that we forget to look to people. And people sometimes just need someone to come up and put their hand on their shoulder just to let them know, hey, I saw you. Glory to God, to help people with God's word. That's why we're there, to teach the word of God. And we want to have always his heart of compassion, that we're not just looking at the crowd, you're looking at the people, the people, seeing people. 
and, and seeing if God wants you to pray or to help or to call or to visit, to help people that in their darkness we can bring light to someone. Let's keep our hearts open and moving with compassion and let it flow through you, even this coming week, to touch people's hearts and lives. Amen. You know, it says in him we live and move and have our being. He wants to flow through us. And a lot of times we don't give him the opportunity that he wants to flow through us because Sometimes we, we take it to our thoughts, well, what if this, what if that? No, if it stirs your heart, follow your heart and go and help people. Sometimes, like I said before, we get too busy and we just see crowds and we forget to look for people and look at the people. God wants to reach out to us. And you know, that happened to me years ago. I told you, I, I'm sure I've shared it a few times. I know I have in church, you know, that when I was my husband, it, it was one Saturday and uh, he was in a hurry and I but I needed something, I'd forgotten something. And he said, look, we've got 10, 15 minutes max, run in there and get what you want and come out quickly. So I ran into a Maya store, it's called in Melbourne here in Australia. And I ran in there because I needed something. And I, I seen the crowds, but I wasn't looking at people because I'm on a time spot. Thing, time allotment here. So I've got to get in and get out. And then all of a sudden I shared with you, one of the ladies that work there, she came out from behind the counter and grabbed me, put her arms around me. And I was so like taken aback because I literally didn't see a person. I was just looking at the crowds and my focus was one on what I had to do. And, and that can happen so much to all of us. And all of a sudden she said, I see you and your husband and sometimes when you come over with your son, I take it to your son for coffee. I said, yes, yeah. she said, I need help. My son, my daughter, you know, died years ago. And she said, I, I, I've never got over it and I need help. And all of a sudden I seen a person, I seen a mom that was hurting and missing a child. I seen someone's heart that was crying out for help. And look at what God did. He had me there at the right time that she was there because he cared so much about her. And he stopped me in my tracks to not be so interested in everything else. Someone's hurting and he knew they were hurting and he wanted to help them. Glory be to God. And who's he going to use to help them? His own kids. And so, you know, she, 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 everyone's watching her, even the people that work with her. And, and then I, I had time with her and talked to her about someone that cared about her and didn't want her to be here, hers. And, you know, she showed up at our church the next day. She came a couple of times and then I think two or three Sundays, I don't remember the exact time, but, you know, Pastor John made an altar call and, you know, for people to go out if they wanted to receive Jesus as Lord. And I went to her instead of having her to come out. And I knelt next to her where she was sat in the chair. And I told her how much God loves her and how much he wants to help her and heal her. And um, as I knelt down there, she received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of her life. Amen. And she's still to this day going on with the Lord. Amen. So that's a wonderful testimony that God knew she needed help that day. Put me in a location and she slowed me down. And all of a sudden I seen a person with a need. Glory to God. And that compassion of God began to flow through because he wanted to touch her. He wanted her to know that he was aware of her and he wanted to help her. You know, when we follow compassion, there's power in that for miracles and healings in people's lives. That's why we, we, want, we, we have these meetings, you know, the Eagles, the healing meeting is online and live. That's why we have our churches. They're there to help people 
to, to be a healing place, a home where they can experience the love, the acceptance, his touch and his breath coming on their lives because they mean something to God and he wants to help them. And how he's going to help them, church, is through you and I. Hallelujah. Because he loves them and he loves you. And he wants us to experience that miraculous love flowing through us in compassion to touch people's lives because people are important to God. You're important to God. You're important to his plan. Amen. And one way that we can help prepare ourselves to be a, a person that God can use to touch people's lives is spending time in the word, spending time in prayer and allowing God in those moments to touch our hearts and lead us to those people that day that just may need a call, a text, just an acknowledgement that God's got his eyes on you and God wants to help you. Hallelujah. That's why we have our churches to be a healing home, a home where people can come and know that we don't look from the platform and just see a crowd, but like Jesus, we see people. And we allow ourselves to take that time to see where God is wanting to move to touch people's lives with his presence that day, to help them. You know, one touch can stabilize someone's life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your compassion. And I pray that you would use every single one of us this week to slow down, to not just look and see crowds and, and busy, 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 but to slow down and be like Jesus, to see people, to look, to see if there's someone that just needs a word. Is there someone that needs a text or a call? Is there someone that needs to be touched because they're going through things? And Father, I pray that, Lord, even right now, I say this over all of us, that if you can use anyone, you can use us for your glory. Father, you can use us to touch people's lives in the name of Jesus. So we praise you, Father, for that agape love of God that's in our hearts, that can begin to stir our heart, that we become more aware of that love touching us, Father, so that like Jesus, we're moved move, that our feet move, our tongues move, to reach out and touch people with your healing power, to touch people and let them know that they are important to God. And because they're important to you, Father, they become important to us. So we thank you this week in our church services, all in the different places, Father, in our day-to-day -day lives, that we start to slow down and we stop looking at crowds and start to see people and ask you, is there someone that's been calling on you that needs help, needs a call, needs some encouragement? Father, we want to be those vessels in the earth that are moved by your compassion to bring compassion to someone's life even today. So we honor you and magnify you and we thank you, Father. We thank you for your love, that it is supernatural, that it can touch someone walking in darkness, bring their spirit to life and cause them to start living in the light. We praise you and honor you tonight, Father, that if anyone right now is going through anything out there, we pray right now that you would send laborers to them. We're asking the Lord of the harvest to thrust laborers around anyone that is going through anything, Father, to let people know they're important to God. They're important to the plan of God. So we pray right now, we lift up people. We lift them up, Father, in those places. If they're despondent, they're feeling hurt, they've been abused, Lord, help us to hear that call, to reach out to them, to be moved like Jesus 
and go to them and bring your healing power, bring your love, bring you to people, Father. And we thank you, we praise you and honor you tonight, right now in the name of Jesus. I call healing to anyone whose heart's been hurt, who's been disappointed this week, who's even feeling right now let down. We pray for them, Father, that your love will just touch their hearts, that your peace will come to their souls and their hearts in the name of Jesus. We bring them before you and thank you for a divine visitation to anyone's heart right now, especially where there's been disappointment, especially where there's been a letdown. And, oh Lord, we pray right now, we commit them into your hands. We thank you, we praise you for a fresh anointing to come upon their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Wow. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. And I pray that if he can use anyone this week, he can use you and he can use me to reach out and touch people's lives because that's really why we're in the earth, amen. Let's just slow down a bit and not look at crowds but start seeing people and asking God who needs help, hallelujah, because the helper the Holy Spirit wants to flow through you, wants to flow through me to bring help to the people. Will you have a wonderful evening? And remember, too, that God loves you. He cares about you. His focus is on you. And he cares about every detail of your life. You're important to God. You're important to his plans and to his purposes in the earth. Glory to God. Very important to him. Let me tell you that tonight. Glory to God. You have a wonderful evening. If you're in Melbourne this week, please join us at one of our campuses, Doncaster at 10 o'clock, Mill Park at 5 o'clock. And if you can't make it live there, you can see it live stream at 10.30 and 5.30 p.m. And look forward to you joining us again next week at the Eagles. Have a wonderful weekend. And remember, you are the apple of God's eye. Hallelujah. There's an evangelism workshop next Saturday. You can share that. Yeah, let me share that with you. There's an evangelism workshop next we next Saturday. What time? It's from um, 9.30 to 12.30 at Doncaster. It's from 9.30 to 12.30 at Doncaster and you're all welcome to join with us next week. And it's going to be exciting. Pastor John and Kerry are going to be sharing. I'm really looking forward to it myself. So hopefully we'll see you at Doncaster at 9.30 next Saturday morning. Have a wonderful weekend and, and just know, that God is with you and he never leaves you, he never forsakes you, and he certainly never abandons you. Glory to God. And those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Shout.